guys and welcome to Geekomania. As usual, that's Ben. Oh, that's Mark. That's Mikey. And that's Ben. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Kia. Uh, yes. <laughs> and today we're going to be talking about what we think are five star films. Basically because we review a lot of films and give them two, three, four star, sometimes one star ratings. But we've never really said what we think is five star. So we're going to have each have three examples. So you guys have some context as to what we think are the best. Yeah, of the best. So, who's going first? Shall we go from... Might as well. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Toy Story 1. Solid choice. Because in my eyes it's the best animation ever. Ever? Ever. Because <laughs> it's uh, the first one of them. Yeah, yeah. And it's really good. It's pretty damn good. Yeah, it's it a great film. It gets you. And it, it hasn't aged really. It looks... It's aged well. It still looks good, yeah. yeah. It, it looks brilliant. Like, I think I prefer the animation then than now, because now it looks a bit too Hollywood. <laughs> 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 the first Toy Story's animation just looked really good, like, great, and I think they've uh, made it look a t too, bit, like, too much of a bit of a cartoon, if that makes sense. Yeah, okay. I'd yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. like, like the old look of it, and it's just brilliant. Like Disney is still trying, well, Pixar is still trying to get the same feel that Toy Story had, the first one, without doing Toy Story 4. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the first Turtles film. It's one of those films I can still surprise, go. Surprise, surprise! It's there! It's one of the films I can still go out and watch, uh, and also the costumes for something that was 1990, they still look um, like still really good, even, even after all these years. The cinematography, I think, is really good, the acting is really good. And it's a film that I can just go back and watch all the time. It can just like make me feel happy, and you know, remind me of nostalgia and that kind of thing, really. Yeah, yeah, very good film. And it's one of those films that even if you guys don't like Turtles, compared to the other two, other two are really bad. But the first one's the film that the pinnacle, and it was before I think South Park or something. I can't remember which one it was. The most um, grossing independent film ever. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's the way to do it. Mm. Okay. Um, my one would be Dread. Dread. Which is here film. as well. Um, because... So we're, we're talking about the uh, Sylvester Stallone one here, right? Yeah, I mean, totally. that's the only five star thing. <laughs> that's the best of them. Yeah. Oh, God. See, they actually clipped it. It's so bad. I am the law. Law! You can change the law! Law! Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so, yeah, obviously yeah. the car lab and... The car lab, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Because, apart from the fact that it rebuilt, it did a lot for what Sylvester Stallone fucked up with the franchise, it was, even taking that out of it, it's a fantastic film and it's everything that that character should be. And it's a nice claustrophobic setting. And it just, it all had, takes place within that tower block and they slowly work their way up. And I can't see any anywhere that they could have improved that storyline. Yeah, yeah, it's a really nice, concise little plot. It's, very, very, it's very well done. Like, make a fucking sequel already. It's not gonna happen. I, I want it to happen. Ninety-two thousand signatures is gonna happen. And I'm gonna call it Dread Four. <laughs> <laughs> Dread Five D. <laughs> Too spooky six me. <laughs> Example of a five star film for me would be uh, Princess Mononoke. <laughs> One of uh, Hayao Miyazaki's best, in my opinion. Which is a, it's one of those Japanese animes for all of you back of gaijins over there. <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, Princess Mononoke for me is a, uh, it's a film that has everything in it. I mean, like, great inter character drama, uh, strong female characters, gore out of the. Jesus, this film is surprisingly gory for a film that looks like it's probably starting off to be a kids' film. And there's this giant roiling demon appears in a village and starts brutally murdering people and people are getting decapitated and it's like whoa this this looked like a happy go lucky kids film is how people are getting decapitated it's like oh and just like the plot is very simple but very well done and very clever it's it's a great tale about man's impact in nature and nature's impact on man and just the way nature's presented as something which is both glorious and something deadly. Like, there's a 
there's a spirit that comes out, which is like the embodiment of nature. And every footstep it takes, flowers blossom instantly and then shrivel and die in a second. And it's just glorious. <laughs> it's just, ah, oh, the animation is beautiful. The character's great. The, the English dub is actually really good as well. Like uh, the voice acting is really well done and the dubbing is effortlessly. You wouldn't, if, if you didn't know better, then you'd think it was intended to be that way. Um, but yeah, it's a really great film. I'd recommend it to everyone. It's a bit long, but that's I just I'm annoyed by any film that's over two hours long usually. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, Michael. Okay, my next one is a comedy, and it's Twenty One Jump Street, because that that's been the funniest film that I've seen in a while, and obviously Jonah Hill's in it, and he's he's brilliant in everything he does, comedy wise, and also Channing Tatum made. You wouldn't, you wouldn't pitch him as a funny guy, but he was quite funny in that as well. And uh, it was just great. And they're making a sequel of it, so it was a successful film, and it was just funny all the way through. Five star. Brilliant film. Mm. Well, so my one, my next film will be Drive. That film uh, was amazing. The cinematography of the film was so good. The soundtrack to the film, I actually went out and bought the soundtrack, it was that good. The acting in it is fantastic. For a film, it's this thing, I first saw it, it's like, this is coming in 18, when you see why it's dated, like, yeah, I can see why. And it's kind of like, as I thought that, on Jay mentioned Jay Brock, it is, in a sense, basically like a live-action version of Vice City, with the text <laughs> and the, you know, the... It really, yeah. the, the influence is, if not intentional, are really clearly there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really is movie Vice Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. Driving, really brutal is. beatings... Uh, Brilliant soundtrack. Yeah, it sounds like a Grand Theft Auto game to me. And it's also got Brian Cranston in it, so that adds more extra force in this as well. He, have you seen it, Keir? I haven't, no. He's the mechanic who makes the cars and stuff for the driver. Such a great film. First, Nicholas... Well, how do you pronounce his name? Nicholas... Blah, blah, blah film I've seen as well. Can't remember his blah, blah. name. <laughs> Nicholas I think that's it. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> no, Nicholas... He was the guy who also directed the other film that came out. Oh, um, Only God Forgives. Yeah, and yeah. he also did Bronson, but I can't remember how to pronounce yeah, his name. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's, I think Blah, Blah, Blah It's, fr right. it's French yeah. sounding, I think. <clears throat> but yeah. Blah, Blah, Blah. Yeah, yeah, so definitely a film I would definitely recommend to anyone to go out and watch. It starts off slow, but then it gets even better and better and better. Oh, it doesn't start off slow. It starts off wonderfully. I really like the opening scene in Drive. Yeah, me too. Oh, I mean, it starts off slow in a sense where... Like you think nothing's gonna happen, and then suddenly just it kind of you know you know what I mean. Kind oh, of but it's so it's so perfectly done. Just the way the soundtrack is just yeah. like it, giving you all the tension and just ah, oh, mm. it's wonderful. And, and even just the tick of the clock is a uh, is a really fun song of mine. And my other, I also love real uh, real hero one that College did. Real human it. being, yeah. Yeah, that's a great one as well. I love the first shot where he's just driving after taking the two robbers back to their place, just driving along with just the music. And him just driving is fantastic. A lot of storytelling told through music. It's a very good mm. example of that. Yeah. Kia. Um, my my next one would be Hot Fuzz. Hot Fuzz is a very good film. Very, very good film. The all of the characters in it are perfect for what they should be. It's um I love it mostly because it's set in the West Country. <laughs> <laughs> And it's cool British cops. That's that's that's. A good what what for action it. films could you ever imagine being set in the West Country of England? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but it's all very well uh, interwoven, and the the whole mystery of it is, you you don't really see them all being in a cult coming. No, until... yeah, it's it's very geniusly told, and even then, when they're in a cult, it's just. It's it's just purely like illogical for some of the reasons like but, but why did you kill that one actor girl? I was like, well, she did have an annoying laugh. She did have an annoying laugh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's one of those things that's really really clever, but very funny about it as well. For all the the insanely clever reasons for them to have killed those people, it's actually for really trivial reasons, mm. and they've all just gone. Yeah, and then uh, Angel Man. chalks up all of these elaborate yeah. connections and is like, oh no, we didn't really like her. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it is. And the fact that, the other thing that, beyond the film, that I, again, I can't find fault with the film. Can't see any way they could have improved it. The other thing that makes it so amazing to me is that a lot of the editing, Edgar Wright did himself because they nearly ran out of time for the film. Yeah. Mm. Which is fantastic. Well, he's a really good editor. Yeah. Right? It's really yeah. one of his strong points as a director. It's how good he is at editing. It's just... It's... Also, his little cameo in... Um, the 
the supermarket <laughs> as a shelf stacker. <laughs> Oh dear. Anyway, uh, so I wanted to put a comedy in. Uh, it's for me, it's tricky because I have very different styles of comedy that I feel. But like, I feel like for me, the pinnacle of comedy in filmmaking is Monty Python. The problem is which Python film, and I think uh, the the best comedy for me is comedy that has a reason to it, a point, a message, and I feel like easily the strongest Python film in that regard is. Monty Python's The Life of Brian. Yeah, yeah. Because awesome it, film. It is a genius, a really intelligent look on religion, and yeah. hugely funny at the same time. I mean, just effortless jokes and incredibly crude <laughs> jokes at the same time, and yet it just highlights the silliness that is religion. Yeah. And just mm. it, it's and it's not necessarily condemning it it's it either like it's it's just gently poking fun at it and just saying like can't you see how silly this is you know they're, they're being respectful and satirical at the same time which is rare um <laughs> yeah it's one of my favorite jokes is it when he says to them we're not you're not all the same you're all different and you hear all the people it's like yeah we're all different it's just like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I love that bit <laughs> just very intelligent humor yeah. and just uh, intermingled with just uh, humour of like walking out of uh, of your window stark naked and having a crowd going it's Brian <laughs> the Messiah <laughs> and the um I should know I should know a Messiah when I see one I've followed a few in my life yeah, yeah. and it's like the shoe the shoe is like oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh that bit yeah. so quotable it's brilliant uh, I, f I feel like the best comedy is comedy that makes you think about the world we live in and not just Give, give you a laugh. I like it when comedy has a reason to it. And for me, Holy Grail is... No, not Holy Grail. Shit! <laughs> Brian! I'm a very naughty boy. <laughs> <laughs> Michael. All right. <clears throat> this is hard. Uh, I'm going to go and put you on the spot here with Dark Knight. Dark Knight um, is a very... Solid yeah, very, very good film. Because film. It's, uh, you can never have a true sequel to it about Heath Ledger. So it will go down in history, I think, as a brilliant film. It, it was just uh, I think the best out of the three Batman films. It was just you can't you can't beat it really, and uh, it was it was brilliant. I can't really say much about it. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, the performances obviously. all were really good in there. Yeah, yeah. It, it was it was just like brilliant all the way through. The build up was great, and the ending was what you what you would have wanted. It was a very satisfying mm. film for me. That that for me is a great portrait on how to deal with villain. Mm. Yeah, like because did, did you because you. you the Joker is just so detestable and yet so likeable yeah. at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's my favourite film where the bad guy wins. Yeah, although he, he gets, completely wins. Although he gets caught, Harvey Dent's gone yeah. because of yeah. him and Batman's gone because of him. Yeah. And Joker's a dick. Uh, it's also, it was also really good to me that they didn't just stop at getting a really good Joker, they also made sure that their Two-Face was up to oh, standard. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, they could have easily just gone... That. No one's they've gone, Heath Ledger's going to be amazing as a Joker. We don't really need to worry about Two Face. Mm. But mm. they went, we need to get the right person for that. Yeah, and I mean, Aaron Eckhart was just so good in it. I can't imagine him ever being in a terrible film. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I, Frankenstein, doesn't look very good, you guys. <laughs> Let's ignore that Aaron Eckhart was in it. Just remember him as Two Face. It's his yeah. second face. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, yeah, my favourite scene in uh, The Dark Knight was definitely. Um, the bit where Batman is in the um, building and he's got to save the hostages and the hostages are disguised as um, bad guys and the bad guys are disguised as hostages and like, it's Morgan Freeman talking him through it which is I, I thought it was really cool how Morgan Freeman's just talking to him up about where things are and it's just great <laughs> I'm really fond of just the opening high scene actually like, yeah. I, I really love that sequence I really like the interrogation sequence. That for me is a really good bit, and and, and, and also as well, I have a soft spot for the magic trick bit as well. Every time I watch that scene, it always makes me laugh. It's magic. It's, it's my God. favorite scene has got to be um, when he's in the hospital talking to Dent, and he twists him and makes him mm. two faced. That's for me. That's the, the only fair thing in life. <laughs> it's a chance. It's lovely. 
Anyway, yeah. let's, let's stop the Dark Knight Circle, Jared. Mark. <laughs> My next one would be The Godfather. That, for me, is a film which is a pinnacle of filmmaking. The acting is fantastic. So, as I always said, cinematography is great. The soundtrack's great. And Marlon Brando is fantastic as The Godfather. I mean, it's the film that, if you notice a lot of films nowadays, people still reference and still mm. use stuff for that because it is that amazing of a film. Francis Ford Coppola is a great filmmaker. I could have lost money then. I could have sworn you were going to say Terminator 2. <laughs> <laughs> nope. No, man. Godfather. Godfather's a fantastic. It is a fantastic film, yeah. Marlon Brando, for me, steals the whole film. Have you, have you, have you two seen it? Uh, no, I've not actually seen The Godfather. Oh, shit, really? I do need to see The Godfather. I, I have made that horrifying omission. On the, the internet. Watching. Yeah. Yeah. It is one of those films, isn't it, Kay, that you can just watch. It's a bit oh, yeah. It's a bit long, but it's still one of those films which is just fantastic. It's got Marlon and Brando, Taro Shear, um, oh, crap, what's his name? Who was Scarface? Al Pacino. Al Pacino in it as well. So, so good. Mm. So, so good. And so, and so references that so many people do references of the Godfather himself. I'll make a lot of colorful views. <laughs> and also as well, some of the scenes in it are just fantastic. And it has a scene that a lot of versions have it cut, but a lot of versions have it uncut. Hmm. Oh, Keir probably knows which one, but I don't want to say which one of these two because it might not a spoiler, but you know, always spoiler. That's a pretty good two. Godfather impression. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> I always make sure I do this as well. Like when we were doing the quiz, I was doing this. I was like, Mikey remembered it. Mikey, it's this. It's like, oh, Godfather. I was like, yes, well done. <laughs> okay, would you, anything you say about Godfather as well? Um, the second one just took it to new heights. That has oh, to be yeah, I haven't seen the second one. Have need, not? No need to watch the second one. But I've heard the third one wasn't very good. Yeah, the third one kind of took it down a peg. But uh, Godfather 2 took where Godfather was and went up a notch. Mm. Or several. So if we did this again after you've seen it, you'd probably say Godfather 2 instead. <laughs> yeah, probably. But the first one is just an yeah. amazing film. The opening scene is fantastic when he's in the chair, choking the cat, he had the man talking to him. It's like, every time I see that, all I think is Mr. Bar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for him to say it. He never does. Uh, it's a film you definitely have to go out and see, but it is a fantastic I, it, film. I, um, I will definitely get around and to you it. Too as well, it's definitely Mikey. something I will try. <laughs> Here. Um, my last one is Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels. No, oh, okay, not seen this one. It is a fantastic okay. film. Clippy. Um, I was kind of torn between saying this or Snatch. As much as I love Snatch, Lock, Stock is my favourite because no matter which time I watch, they're both flawless films, easily. But Lock, Stock is every time I watch it, it just makes me fall in love with film again. Because, as, again, I can't find anything wrong with it. And the way the story is knitted into itself, and there is, it's kind of like a Tarantino-esque thing of there is all these separate characters that cross paths. But at the same time, it's, it's done in, the, in it's almost silly serious. Because <laughs> there there's serious threats to them. They, they could get killed by gangsters, they could get shot by all these horrible people. But at the same time, they tell a story about a man who was beaten to death with a 12-inch uh, black rubber dildo. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's, there, there's, there's the sense of fun with it, and um, everyone in it is perfect for that role that they should be. Um, as Jason Statham is in it, and I can't remember the guy's name, but the guy that plays Soap is frighteningly good at playing such a frightening character because he's a character that he he's called so because he likes to keep his hands clean of all the wrongdoing that they do but they come in they, they plan to um do a heist of sorts and they only have two shotguns and soap comes in and goes we don't use guns we use knives because knives are for men guns are scared <laughs> guns what, what you when you're scared Knives are more personal. Knives are for men. And they go, well, where are we going to get knives? And he pulls out a roll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Big, sharp knives. And it is, it is fantastic. And I would recommend it to anyone. Because, again, you can't find fault with it. Every turn that makes is deliberate. That, that is made is deliberate. And it's, it's a nice way of... The, the ending as well, which would give it all away. But the ending is a nice way of rounding it all off. And just summing up the entire film in general. Which, I love it. 
<laughs> I love it so much. All right, yeah. yeah. So my final example of a five star film is something that's uh, in a weird way kind of recent. Robocop. <laughs> Robocop. I really love the original Robocop. For me, yes. it is the perfect action film and a really damn good revenge film. And I, I just love the old school effects in it. I am a sucker for squibs. And oh. this film has so many squibs. For those of you who don't know, a squib is like in old school 80s action films. You see those little uh, blood spurts. They're like little explosions. That's called a squib. And in Robocop, there's a lot <laughs> of squibs. On one man. <laughs> yeah, there's, a, there's that one infamous scene where N219 just brutally guns down the guy for a solid, like, <laughs> minute. And the guy is just constantly just like, ah! <laughs> and I, I just adore so many things about this film. I mean, every little detail, down to the way that he moves, down to the way he was brutally murdered like 10 minutes in and then you have this great revenge story and the apocalyptic wasteland that is modern Detroit and like the little subtle things like all the little commercials that are trickled throughout the film like that just paint a horrifying picture like the little uh, board game, which is like battleships, only with nukes. And it's like, I'm putting a treaty on your warheads. And it's just like, you know, and it's like, oh, no, you don't. I'm launching my war missiles. Yay. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, God, <laughs> this could be the world. Yeah. If only Robocop could save us. And then, you know, and Robocop is a, a horrifying movie. Like, it's kind of scary. <laughs> The way this man, like the way this man gets brutally murdered and is just stripped of almost everything that made him a man, and how he slowly learns that he was a human once, and that he can never truly recapture that, mm. and mm. that he'll never have his family back, and it's like it's 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 kind of sad, which is weird because the you know this is a film called RoboCop. You wouldn't. Ex but with a name like that, you wouldn't expect a hard-hitting, <laughs> like, emotional film. But it is kind of emotional. And the action scenes are amazing. Yes. And the, the every, like, I really love everything production-wise about this. The way it looks, the way it sounds, uh, the way uh, N2109's animates in just this clearly old-fashioned stop-motion. Like, it looks really clunky, but it makes it look artificial, which is mm. fine. Because he's a big dumb robot, even if he is, he's a big, yeah, he's a big dumb robot who gets defeated by a set of stairs. It's a very eighties style robot. It's like, yeah, dumb, dumb, dumb. The robot's like, huh. <laughs> he doesn't actually laugh. That would be, that would ruin it. That would. But in this, oh, God. so yeah, in summary, I'm looking forward to the Robocop remake that's coming out this month. Yeah. Look forward to our review on that. <laughs> I won't get pissed off. I promise. Any honourable mentions you guys want to mention at all? Honourable mentions? Um, well, Snatch, obviously. I did kind of talk about it before. Brad Pitt plays as a surprisingly good gypsy. He does, doesn't he? He's <laughs> <laughs> in that role. I need to sleep. But no, it wasn't very good. <laughs> I've, got, I've got followers there. I, I, I can do a really good impression of that, but not very good. Could you do the Godfather? Could you do your Godfather impression as Brad Pitt, as a gypsy? <laughs> <laughs> I leave the slate. What? <laughs> <laughs> I think we should end it there. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I think that was Geekomania, guys. That was. That's Kay. That's Ben. That's Michael. And that's Mark. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Bye. See you later, Brad Pitt, Gypsy Godfather.